hey guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel today's video is part of the here comes fall leaves and flowers collaboration i'll tell you more about that in just a little bit let's jump right into the diys this is the wreath that i did with the heidi sumble summertime diy and this is a way how i save a lot of money with my crafts by repurposing them. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go in and take everything So I'm off. continuing with my fall themed DIYs through this month and maybe a little portion of September. I would like to show you guys how I incorporated all of the DIYs um, for front porch decor as well as um, throughout my home. I don't want you guys to think that I'm just making all of this stuff and I don't utilize it. So I thought it would be super cool to show you guys that part too. When I'm doing projects, I like to make sure that everything is glued down very well. However, I'm also thinking about ways to glue it where it stays, but to not um, make it where I can't reuse the, the um, whatever I'm reusing. In this case, it's the... Um, grapevine form okay so i lied it's not a grapevine form it's actually some kind of twigs or, or trees or something anyways it was only a dollar i picked it up from the dollar tree and it was a really great wreath i definitely wanted to reuse it so here i'm just going in and i'm carefully taking everything off trying to not disturb the form of the wreath because i am getting it ready to put on the fall leaves and flowers so last year for um, fall time, I put out the traditional colors for fall on the front porch and I loved how inviting it looked. It just looked like fall time on our front porch. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back with that again this year. Comment below and let me know what colors you guys are planning to use for your fall decor. And also comment if you'd like to see the front, my front porch once I have everything decorated, if that's a video that you guys would be interested in. As you can see, I have successfully taken off all the watermelon themed um, items and now I'm back to a bare slate which is super great because uh, this wreath was intact and I'm super glad that I'm gonna be able to use it not only for fall time, but I also have plans for Christmas as well. All right, so I'm gonna go in with this five foot garland that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now, because I feel like I may reuse this form again, um, in my head, I'm thinking that I'm gonna try to intertwine it underneath these little ropes this little twine that's already here to kind of help me keep it in place without having to actually um, hot glue it down. So are you guys excited for fall time? I know I am. And in my last video, I mentioned that I love pumpkin spice coffee and I had a cup the other day. You can take it here, start it here, and then you can just pop it in and out like this around it making sure that you are going in and making sure that you have your your picks showing on the right side of the form. Now remember guys, this is truly for inspiration. If you're not gonna use these colors, feel free to use whatever goes with your decor. Now doing it this way, you may have to use um, at least two because this garland, it is a dollar, but it's also very sparse. So, um, just keep that in mind you, that you may have to have two depending on how full you want it to look. So I'm basically, you guys can you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm just wrapping it around and once I get to the end, I'm going to tuck that under. I'm gonna do like a little twisty tie, like a bread tie and then tuck it under to hide the loop. And then once I get to the end, I just do a little, one little twist there and go back under here. This allows for me to not use any hot glue, but to also secure the ends so I do not lose my garland. I know this is looking a little sparse, but stay with me. I have a lot of floral picks. As we want it to look full, we're gonna do a second one. So here's my second one. And with a little YouTube magic, 
Okay, so going the opposite end, so if you can see I have two that starts over here, and then I have one that's right here, and I don't see the other one, but going in the opposite direction allows for it to um, not match up on the same spot, if that makes sense. This also allows for me to be able to use my picks that I'm going to put in between these little open pieces. And I'm just gonna kinda go around and fix them. And you know, you can turn them to see, to go the way you want. So like for instance, this one, I want it to look, cover that hole a little bit, so I just turn it. That's the beauty of this. Now, a couple of these, you may have to glue them down and that's okay because you'll still get to use your reform, but you will also get in, um, you will also be able to um, pull those up very easily or cover that spot if you do mess up the wreath form. So I'm liking the way it's looking so far. And I feel like there are a couple that I may have to glue down, but I'm going to glue those after I have my other ones, uh, my other picks in place because I do not want to mess it up. So in my last video, I used, I called it a cattail, but it was actually a foxtail. So I have some more of these and I'm going to use those to go through and sprinkle in between. And with this entire pick, I'm not going to waste any of it. I'm going to try to use all of it. Um, because I do want the fullness of this wreath. I put quite a few picks on this wreath and it is not even nowhere near as full as it could be. So this again is your discretion. As I'm cutting these, I'm being mindful of my fingers and my eyes. So this is what it's starting to look like as I put a couple picks on. So I have the foxtails on there and as you can see, it is filling up the space where there wasn't any leaves. I'm just gonna continue to work around and um, inserting the ends of those flowers and stems underneath the jute that was wrapped around the um, wreath to hold it together. And this way, again, I'm not using any glue. And you will see towards the end, but I never had to use any glue for this project. So that's always a plus. And I feel like they're really secure being held on with that um, jute twine. Now here's something, if you choose to glue them, then that's fine too, but um, I decided to just go with the twine. So guys, while you continue to watch me randomly place these picks, I want to welcome all of the subscribers to my channel who are new and for all of those who have already been living life with Lon, thank you guys so much for your continued support. Welcome newcomers. I'm so glad you're here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It is absolutely free. And if you don't mind hitting the like button because that lets YouTube know that you like content like this this and it also helps my channel grow and so guys this is how my wreath turned out what do you guys think I absolutely love it I think it's a great start to the fall decor and I went ahead and put those little white pumpkins in there and the little cream uh, flowers but comment below and let me know if I should keep those in or if I should take them out um, I feel like it does give the eye a little bit of um, interest looking at it on camera it is kind of looking like um yeah take take those out so comment below and let me know whether i should keep or discard the white pumpkins and if you like what you see don't forget to hit that thumbs up button so like I said, this video is part of the Here Comes Fall Leaves and Flowers Collapse. It is hosted by Ellie from DIY From House to Home. This playlist is full of other talented creators. And so for your convenience, I have linked the playlist as well as Ellie's channel in the description box below. This next DIY for me, I call it a swag. I'm not sure if it's a sway, but I feel like the correct way to pronounce it is a swag so basically what i'm doing is taking two maple leaf um, floral pick and i'm putting the ends together and i'm going to take some jute twine and wrap them around one another 
Now you could easily use some zip ties, but I'm using what supplies I had on hand. Plus, using the jute twine allows me to use the technique that I used in the wreath form to insert my picks. Once everything has dried and it is secure in place, then I go in with some more maple leaves that I got from the Dollar Tree as well as those additional foxtails. I got some hydrangeas. Just I just got every floral pick that they had pretty much at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going in and sticking the ends underneath the jute and just kind of going from right to left, left to right, but not in a formation, if that makes sense. I'm just kind of sticking them randomly. And basically what I'm trying to do is close the gap to make sure that there is a very small center that is left open. If you are stopping by from the playlist, hello, my name is Lon, and I'm so glad that you have stopped by. On my channel, I create affordable DIYs and thrift flips on a budget. If that is content that you like seeing, then I hope that you'd stick around and join the family. I'm just continuing to add in the floral picks, randomly placing them in underneath the jute twine and in between the um, other uh, wires from the other picks. Now, I did get to a point to where I couldn't stuff any more under the jute twine. So I did have to add some hot glue to the top and I put the picks on top of the hot glue, of course, using a um, tongue depressor to hold them in place because hot glue is hot. And um, I kind of got my finger a couple times. Um, so yes, that's why I use that method. Um, but yeah, it turned out super cute and I think you guys are going to like the end result. Again, this is for inspiration. If you do not like these, um, color choices, then choose flowers and picks that you like and make your swag. So guys, this is how it turned out and I think it's super cute. I have put it on my table just to see what it would look like. I also put it on a faux window to see what that option would look like. And I actually like it in both areas. I cannot wait to decorate fall with it. Again, I'm going to start sometime in September. So you will definitely have to come back and check out how I style this DIY swag. I think what I like most about this piece is that it has a just a variety of um picks you know it has the pumpkins in there it has the pomegranates the foxtails i absolutely love this one all right moving into the final diy the picture frame which is super duper easy so i picked up this pack of paper um from michael's and it is 12 by 12 in size and it is two per print and i got it using my 40 percent off coupon i thought it the the prints were super pretty and definitely will be used in future DIYs so I felt like it was definitely a great purchase. Each page has perforation so that makes it easy to remove and get out of the book and then I went over to this picture frame that a good friend of mine um, gave to me. It originally came from Hobby Lobby and it was $2.99 but she got it at Goodwill for $0.77 cents, so this was definitely a deal. Next I took the frame apart and I took the glass, traced around the glass on the um, piece of scrapbooking paper. The paper quality of this paper guys is really great. It's a very sturdy cardstock feel. So I knew that I wanted to write the words welcome fall on this piece of scrapbooking paper and I used that doing the um, faux calligraphy method. Now, if you do not have a great handwriting, there's always stencils and rub-on transfer letters at the Dollar Tree. So just remember that thick strokes are down and thin strokes are up. Next, I used some watered down brown acrylic paint for a stain and stain the wooden frame with one coat. If you're still here with me, go ahead and drop a camera emoji in the comments below. And if you do not have emojis, then feel free to type out the word camera. 
So to help my frame not look so plain and just very blah, I'm going in with some baby pine cones that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And by the way, they smell super yummy. I think one bag was pumpkin and the other was cinnamon. So they smell super great. And I just took um, my hot glue gun and glued those, just a couple of them, to the corner here. And then I got some raffia to make a bow. If you've ever worked with this, comment below and let me know how you open it up and get it out. I feel like I am fighting with this stuff. It is always a challenge and I don't even know what I am doing wrong. I end up just pulling out just enough to do whatever I need to do and then ball it back up again. So comment below if you know the correct way to get the raffia unwrapped. So I'm totally not in frame here and I apologize for that, but I'm basically just doing like a shoestring bow as if I was tying my shoe. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is how it turned out. Comment below and let me know what you guys think. I think it's so cute and it makes a great little statement piece. I put a little flower on there on top of the, um, yeah, I think it's probably Gerber Daisy is what I would have to guess. And down below you will see the cluster of baby pine cones and a little potpourri mix was in there too. So I stuck that on there because it was orange and I thought it was cute. Um, I thought the paper was very fitting for the theme of leaves and flowers. But guys, do not forget to check out the playlist. You will not be disappointed, I promise. Thank you, Ellie, for including me in on this collaboration. It was so much fun and a great way to continue my um, fall-themed DIYs. And remember, if you're not living life with lawn, then you're missing out. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.